Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last video, we talked about Streptococcus pyogenes. Today, we'll talk about Streptococcus agalactiae, the nasty group B streptococci, which can cause neonatal sepsis, neonatal pneumonia, and neonatal meningitis. It can also cause puerperal sepsis and endometritis in the baby's mother. With that said, now let's get started. This is my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Let's start with a case, shall we? A neonate born. Day 1 to day 12, everything is hunky-dory. On day 13, the baby started getting irritable. He's not feeding well. And suddenly, he developed generalized tonic-clonic seizure. They took him to the hospital. He was hospitalized, diagnosed, and given the appropriate treatment. Nonetheless, he developed hydrocephalus. And he stayed in the hospital until the 100th day, where he was discharged from the hospital, unfortunately, with permanent psychomotor retardation. What? What the flip happened? This is classic late onset neonatal meningitis caused by Streptococcus agalactiae. Even on day 13? Even on day 13. And even after you diagnose it based on a lumbar puncture and giving the appropriate treatment, which is penicillin G, the baby can still develop permanent sequelae. That's how horrible this disease is. Remember, with group B strep, you have neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, and neonatal pneumonia. And that's why you should pay attention instead of being a doofus with a stethoscope. Because babies do not come and tell you, Hey doctor, I think I got some new color rigidity. And by the way, would you please close the window on this nonsense because I got photophobia? And why don't you come here, big boy, and perform the Koenigs and Brudzinski's maneuver? Babies don't say that. The only sign could be just an irritable baby who is not feeding. And this could be sepsis or meningitis. So pay close attention. If you want to learn about the Koenig sign and Brzezinski sign, you will find these videos in my playlist called Signs in Medicine. Let's go back to square one. Group B strept, also known as strept agalactia, is a gram-positive coccus that is catalase negative, beta hemolytic, i.e. complete hemolysis. Group B strep is resistant to the antibiotic basitracin, i.e. basitracin is not gonna kill it. Hey, medicosis, why the flip did we call it streptococcus agalactia? Let's talk about streptococcus. A coccus is a spherical organism. Oh, I got it. And then streptococcus, like stre like chicken strep. Oh, arranged in chains. Why agalactiae? Because they were first discovered as a cause of cow mastitis. A means no. Galactia from galactose, milk, no milk. Oh, cow mastitis. But in humans, they do not affect breast tissue. They cause neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, neonatal pneumonia. In adults, they might cause endometritis, puerperal or peripartum sepsis, urinary tract infections, joint infections, skin and soft tissue infections, but not mastitis. Do you remember how we classified streptococci? We had many systems of classification. Could be based on serology, these are types or group A, group B, group C, group D, etc. This is the lens field classification, or you can classify them based on their hemolytic capabilities into partial hemolysis, complete hemolysis, or no hemolysis. Group B strep are here. We can call them group B strep because they have this kind of antigen. And they happen to be beta hemolytic based on this classification. The beta hemolytic streptococci are many. Don't forget strep pyogenes was beta hemolytic. Today's topic, strept agalactia, is also beta hemolytic. The difference is strep pyogenes is group A, 
but Streptagalactia is group B based on the lens field classification. Other than that, both are beta hemolytic. Streptpyogenes was discussed in previous videos. Let me remind you that we're talking pyogenes, pus formation, pus on my skin, pyoderma, skin infections, pus in my pharynx, pharyngitis, and don't forget the immunological diseases, including rheumatic fever and post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, among others. Streptococcus agalactiae colonizes the female genital tract. They can colonize the upper respiratory tract as well, and they can pass from mommy to baby via vertical transmission, and they cause neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, and neonatal pneumonia. Even after you treat them, they can cause permanent neurological sequelae. That's why prevention is better than cure. It's better to recognize them as they colonize the female genital tract and you screen the mother between week 35 and 37 of gestation. And if you think there is high risk of transmission, you go ahead and give penicillin right away, prophylactically. Please pause and review. We're talking neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, neonatal pneumonia. Never ever forget this. And we have early onset neonatal disease and late onset neonatal disease. Before day seven of life, this is called early onset. After day seven, it's called late onset. Both can happen. Both are caused by the nasty streptagalactiae. Streptagalactia is the only streptococcus that has group B. It is gram-positive, catalase-negative, coagulase-negative, beta-hemolytic, it is a freaking coccus, and it colonizes upper respiratory tract and lower genitourinary tract, peroneal area, etc. Transmitted from mommy to baby, causing neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, neonatal pneumonia. Let's do it again. Streptococcus agalactiae, gram-positive cocci. If you are talking about a clinical specimen, like a swab from the vaginal canal, you'll see short chains. If you culture them, they give you long chains. Virulence factors, group-specific carbohydrates, they happen to have the B antigen. That's why we call them group B, according to the lens field classification. Next, we have not group-specific, but type-specific. Capsular carbohydrate, the capsule is sweet, made of sugar. Polysaccharide capsule, a strong virulence factor. These carbohydrates have many types, including 1A, 1B, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1A and 3 and 5 are responsible for early onset neonatal disease. 3 is also responsible for the late onset neonatal disease. 1A and 5 are responsible for adult disease, which can affect pregnant women, non pregnant women and men. Neonatal disease include neonatal bacteremia or sepsis, meningitis, and pneumonia. Adult disease in pregnant women include puerperal sepsis or peripartum sepsis, endometriitis, urinary tract infections, wound infections. Non-pregnant women and male patients can suffer from bacteremia, pneumonia, joint infection, skin and soft tissue infections. Pregnant women are usually in their 20s and 30s, usually healthy. That's why the prognosis is good. However, non-pregnant patients are usually older with multiple comorbid conditions. We're talking uncontrolled diabetes. We're talking kidney transplant recipients receiving immunosuppressants. Maybe a malnourished elderly person, maybe HIV positive person. All of these are causes of weak immunity. The prognosis tends to be poorer than their younger pregnant counterparts. Group B strep can colonize the upper respiratory tract or the genitourinary tract. Most of these patients are asymptomatic carriers. However, during pregnancy, under certain 
high risk factors, vertical transmission can happen from the mother to the baby. What are these circumstances that increase the risk of vertical transmission? Ready? Large number of bacteria colonizing the vaginal canal or the perineal area, prolonged rupture of membrane or premature prolonged rupture of membranes, preterm birth, intrapartum fever before delivery, mom has inadequate antibodies against group B strep, and therefore the baby will have inadequate antibodies against group B strep. Once the baby gets exposed to group B strep, which he got from mommy, the baby will suffer from neonatal bacteremia or sepsis, neonatal meningitis, neonatal pneumonia. How do I diagnose? Microscopy. Unfortunately, microscopy of the vaginal fluid is useless, not very sensitive. However, microscopy of the cerebrospinal fluid of the baby is very accurate. What else? Cultures are even better, but they take longer. You can take the culture sample from a vaginal swab or a perineal swab, preferably both, and you should swab every pregnant woman between the 35th and the 37th week of gestation. What kind of culture medium should I use? Selective broth medium, such as LIM, and you add cholestin and nilodexic acid. Why are you adding these? To kill other organisms, leaving Streptococcus agalacti alone to grow and multiply on the freaking petri dish. This is accurate, but it takes a lot of time. What about PCR or nucleic acid amplification test? Very accurate. The results are ready in less than three hours. Oh, that's cool. But they are stinking expensive. What's the treatment? Well, the treatment, just like the prophylaxis, is penicillin G. G, it hurts. G, it's an injection, not an oral medication, unlike penicillin V. Let's review Streptococcus agalactia from the wonderful Picmonic website. Link is in the description. Group B strep. Here is the B stripper. Gram positive. Here is the angel. Gram cracker positive angel. We're talking gram positive cocci. Spherical. Here are cocked eyes. Spheres. Beta hemolytic. Here is the beta fish. On a petri dish causing complete hemolysis. Strept agalactia is resistant to bacitracin. Catalase negative. Here is negative cat and PYR negative. They will not give you the red color. They have a polysaccharide capsule. They happen to be hippurate positive. They produce cyclic MP or the CAMP factor, which can enlarge the zone of hemolysis caused by staph aureus. Staph aureo. Don't forget that group B strep colonize the vaginal canal. You should screen every pregnant woman between 35 and 37 weeks of gestation. If mommy has lots of bacteria, or if prolonged rupture of membranes happen, or if this is a preterm delivery, give penicillin prophylactically. Penicillin G is the prophylaxis and the treatment. What's the disease? Neonatal sepsis, neonatal meningitis, and neonatal pneumonia. Remember when we talked about the natural penicillins before? We have penicillin V, which is oral, and penicillin G, which is an injection. G, it hurts. The oral penicillin V is used for group A strep, as we have discussed before, but the penicillin G is used for syphilis and for group B strep or streptococcus agalactiae for neonatal sepsis, that is, and we give it as an injection. To learn more about the other types of penicillins and cephalosporins, please download my antibiotics course. It's medicosisperfectsnetis.com. Medicosis nuggets of medicine, clinical pearls for the pros. Hey, medicosis, who should be screened for colonization with group B strep? All pregnant women between 35 and 37 weeks of gestation, and I mean, all of them. Okay, medicos, let me ask you a different question. Who should receive the prophylactic treatment with the injection penicillin G? Only those pregnant women who test positive 
for group-based trapped colonization, especially if they have lots of group-based trap, especially if it happens that prolonged rupture of membrane is observed before delivery or preterm prolonged rupture of membrane or preterm birth, intrapartum fever, or if mom has inadequate antibodies against group B strep. If you find these risk factors, don't risk it. Just give penicillin G to the mother before delivery, preferably more than four hours before delivery. Why do I have to wait four hours? Because the stinking penicillin is a cell wall synthesis inhibitor. It needs time to inhibit the synthesis of new cell wall of the gram-positive Streptococcus agalactiae, and this takes time. The bacteria does not synthesize a new cell wall in two seconds. It takes time. That's why you should give penicillin G earlier before delivery. Bare minimum is four hours before delivery. Hey, medicosis, I wanted to give penicillin G to the mother prophylactically, but she told me that she's allergic to penicillin. What should I do? You can give cefazolin. But hey, medicosis, this is a cephalosporin. Still, there is a 10% risk of cross-allergenicity between cephalosporins and penicillin. Okay, you're studying hard. Good job. You can try clindamycin, my Catholic nun, or vancomycin, the man in the van. If you want to know why vancomycin is a man in the van and why clindamycin is a Catholic nun, then you should download my antibiotics lectures. We're talking 40 videos, 70 questions, 35 cases with answers, my Perfectionalis Ultimate Notebook, a single humongous PDF that you should download and print and keep for you forever, plus a mind map to help you memorize antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. You can download it today at medicosisperfectionaries.com. You download it once, you keep it for you forever. I also have a neuropharmacology course, a general pharmacology course, a toxicology course, and gazillion other courses. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.